Hey fellow producers, Cyber Sequencer tutorial. I've been asked to walk you guys through this app front to back, hopefully within 10 minutes. You'll understand this really, really well. I've been using a lot of the uh, online and offline DAWs for many, many years and understand how they work really, really well. So I should be able to get you guys uh, up to speed, even if you've never made a beat, never touched a sequencer in your life and everything here looks really Chinese to you and you don't understand what all these buttons and sliders do. I'll walk you guys through this real quick and hopefully before we're done, um, you can watch this video, follow along even and press pause where you need to and make a beat with me once I explain what everything does. So first thing you'll notice uh, is this big grid. Nothing happens within a sequencer without you actually putting stuff in the grid. And for us to put stuff in the grid, we simply paint it in with the brush. But before we do that, I'd like to explain what everything else does. Um, we'll start top right and move our way over to the left. This is simply your tempo. You can change that to whatever you want using, uh, just highlight it and then type in whatever you want up to two decimal points. And this is universal. So if you import your beat afterwards to Cubase or to Logic or to uh, any of that, you're gonna get the same tempo and it's locked in its universal time code. So it's really nice. Metronome, okay, so here, let's change this. We'll go to 99. You just heard me trigger drums with my keyboard. I'll show you what that means in a moment. Turn our metronome on. Bar count, we'll leave it two for now. We'll put the loop on, we'll press play, and you'll just simply see the ticker go through and you'll hear the metronome. It's very light in volume, but that just means that it just played uh, two bars at 99 beats per minute, okay? Exporting, once you're done everything, you export to Wave. Save simply saves your actual file so you can open it later and keep working with it. Open, there you go, new. Just if you're done whatever you're doing, you've exported, you want to start over, just press new or just close the app and restart it to clear your cache and you'll have a nice faster uh, beat build going on. Anytime this freezes or anything bad happens with it and you're frustrated, literally just close it and reopen it and then try to save your file every few minutes or so and just save over the one you just recently saved and you'll, you'll be fine. So here we have 16 layers going down and the first four have been assigned to drums and the next four have been assigned to keys. And what that means is, uh, I'll show you what that means in a moment. And then for the rest of them, uh, you can simply choose. They're all interchangeable, okay? You simply roll over this guy here, click, and you'll see drums, keys, and none, okay? And you can interchange everyone and anyone to be whatever you want. If you want them all to be drum kits, no problem, change them all to drums. And what this will mean is uh, every single one of these now works with the drums. In order to enable the keys, you have to assign it to keys. And then I'll show you what happens once you draw in a bar or two. Actually, before we even do that, these 16 channels here represent these 16 channels here. And these are just volumes, okay? So number one is this number one. And on that same token, I can solo it, so only that will play, or I can mute that channel, so all the other channels will play, that'll be muted. This is also the same thing and same way you would export all your tracks and track out properly. If you've built up eight, nine layers and 16, 32 bars, whatever, and you just want the, the first layer, you solo it and you export it. Then you would solo layer two and export it. Then you would solo layer three and export it. And then you would bring those layers into whatever other DAW to go into further editing and tweaking and filtering and mastering and all that kind of stuff if you wanted to. You can do most of that in here. However, to build up your full tracks and to get really crazy afterwards, um, I would recommend utilizing C Cyber Sequencer to make your beats, to make your hooks, to make your verses, whatever else, uh, and then bring it into other DAWs to simply loop it, repeat it, and then arrange it properly into your choruses, verses, hooks, bridges, outros, and everything else. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our first bar here. If I just click with the paintbrush on layer one, you'll see that I have filled in half because we start the whole app with two bars. So if I just click, I get one full bar. If I click, hold, and drag all the way to the end, I have not let go of my mouse button yet. Now I let go. Now I've drawn in two bars. And here's the difference. If I click on this first guy and click edit, this gives me my drum panel. First thing I want you to notice is the four fades. Uh, each bar is broken up into 1 16th quantizing, which means each one of these strips, there's 16 spots to lay your little samples and notes into. If I click on this guy, it's been drawn over two bars, and you'll notice there's 32 spots, or eight fades, and each of those little guys has four, so in total there's 32. So what you're looking at here is our drum machine. Remember when I said nothing happens in here? This is just a shell. Nothing happens in here without you actually putting bars in. So I've drawn a bar in. Okay, let's get rid of these guys, both of them, because I like to work with two bars, and you'll see why in a moment. Uh, we'll draw a full guy in here, and then right down on the key layer that we made, we'll draw in a two-bar thing on the keys, and I'll show you what both panels do. So now, I open this up, I get my drum 
machine. On the left is simply all of our kits. These pads here, okay, are the same as these here. So one is a kick, two is a kick, three is a snare, four is a snare. You'll notice the same here. Kick, kick, snare, snare. These are volumes, so you can change the volume of every single sound, so you can master it if some of the kicks or snares are too loud or whatever is too soft. Um, you can master each kit perfectly. So now what I, what I like to do, you can do two things. So first and foremost on the keyboard you type on, numbers one through zero on your keyboard are your pads. So I can go. All right, I can record. Um, if you're really comfortable with working with these patterns and matrices and grids, um, again, for those that are confused still, this one's strip, it's two bars and there's 32 slots in here. So if I go with the kick only, kick, and then imagine, kick, t, 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 snare, t, t, kick, t, kick, t, t, snare, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. All right, all these sounds here, we can use them all. And we, if we fill everything in with an untraditional pattern, it'll just sound like mud. So first thing we try to do is just get a simple beat going and uh, using two sounds, kicks and snares. Nice and simple. From here, we can keep growing it. Add in some hi-hats. Turn those down a little bit. And already we have a very simple beat. On the left, remember I was saying we have different kits? If you don't like how that sounds, after you've already laid it in, you can simply change the kit up. Every single one of these can be assigned to a drum layer, and if you were to assign every single track to a drum layer and open it up, um, and there's 10 layers within, you have 160 tracks and layers to work with. It's pretty crazy. So uh, we, we're not going to do that, though. We're going to keep the patterns basic and interesting at the same time and just utilize a few layers here because we don't need to use 16 you can it's there and i mean you can do crazy power mixes beat juggles crazy transitions double up on the timing and drop in wicked fills so here what we'll do next is understand the keyboard layer we draw in two bars on a key track click e and here you get your keyboard and it's very similar on the left hand side is all your sounds and instead of using pads we have 48 notes to work with and same thing 32 notes across because we've used two bars not one. If it was just one bar, we'd have four fades and we'd have 16 across. So we could do the same thing, record them live or draw them in. So first I'm going to just try to find something I like. There we go. That sounds you can change up the sound while it's already dropped in or again you can simply uh, move stuff around if you're happy with the sound you just don't like the, the pattern you've created okay we'll keep going here we'll do another layer underneath the kick or underneath the drum kits and the boxes are cool they have like four or five octaves sometimes put together into one sample so check this out like listen mix music jot song down and then we also have males bling jeev oh say you know please bleh. i like this one bleh. puff pass uh -huh. go uh -huh. Okay, so now let's say that bass is a bit too loud for me. We simply find it here, channel 9, channel 9, low end. It's labeled low end. We'll bring that down a little bit. And let's say those boxes are a bit too loud too. We'll simply bring that down a little bit. Um, here, the keyboard is laid out on the front end, and so are the drums. And that's simply so I can go like this and 
preview everything right on the front end, or again, using my keyboard that I type on, and you'll see them highlight and stay highlighted, meaning I've already used that key once or twice, uh, and then just simply move it and it resets everything. Down here, I can change the kits right from here. I don't have to actually go in and uh, click on this guy and go in here and change one of these. I can simply scroll and jog just left and right one kit at a time. I'll do that, change the sound two, sound three. <laughs> Notice it's a different beat. Hip hop one. And now same thing with the keyboard. I can simply go on my keyboard layer and here, same thing. I can either keep playing here, previewing the sound or I'm with my keyboard. Or I can simply jog through one at a time and hear how it might sound with the next sound in. that but I like that make sure the metronome's off before you export uh, and from here I could simply export this and I already have a nice two bar hook I can loop I can mess around with or I can you know mute some of the other tracks and just get that first layer or vice versa I can mute the first layer get rid of that and now I just have the boxes and the bass yeah, so there you have it. What I can do from here now is I'm going to grow the bar count from 2 just to a simple 8. Press enter, grow my loop note out to the end. And now, just like with the other um, DAWs out there, I, you can hold down Control, Shift, or Alt. For, for this app, it's Shift, hold down Shift, click, hold, and drag, and you drag your two bars over. Now you've just duplicated that. And you can do that again and again. Now I have eight bars. These are all two bar chunks. Remember, we drew in first full two bars before doing anything else. So we have eight bars divided into four because these are two bars each. And now same thing with the rest of the layers. I can simply copy them over, get my bass in there. Or let's say I don't want the bass on every bar. I only want it on every, every other two bars. We can do that as well. We can keep building here. Um, we can change things up now as well. And that's really neat. So if I want to change just this first two bars, I can do that without affecting everything else. Even after I've duplicated it, you're not making duplicate instances that are all affected universally. You're making individual copies. So now only that is missing the hi-hats. Everything else is still intact. And you can do really cool drops because of that. So now I can add a little crash here, or this version of the crash in that kit anyway. Um, I can have a nice little buildup of kick drums and that'll boom drop into the next beat next uh, set of bars sorry not the best example but there you have it just to show you guys quick functionality of what this thing can do all right we'll start over so the same way I built that pattern you can do the same for pretty much any genre click hold drag E, uh, let's see, we'll make some house. House works very easily, actually. You, s you usually drop in a kick on every one of the four within a measure. We can loop it. Uh, we can start adding other sounds. There we go. So this should already be a simple kick and hi-hat combo for a house track at 120 BPM over two bars. Okay, and now what we can do is just keep adding on to it. I like that actually, we'll keep that. And then here, we'll grow this out to 16, let's say. And the same thing we did before, we're gonna do here as well. We're gonna copy it over 